Uh, Ty, how aware how aware were you that you had a no hitter going into that seventh inning, and what kind of happened on that infield single? What was kind of your reaction to that play? Yeah, I mean, I, I knew it was there, and and it's kind of hard not to. But um, I mean, I've got all the faith in Cam, and just a cheap knock, and just after that, it's over, and on to the next one. How, how did you feel out there tonight? Obviously, you face a much tougher team last week, and um, you know, had an all right performance against Mississippi State, but just kind of how did you feel out there tonight? Yeah, it felt good. We uh, worked hard this week on just getting fastball down and landing sliders. And um, I mean, I thought I did a good job with that. Didn't feel overly live, just kind of staying in my legs. And um, when I tend to do that, it tends to come out good. Justin, go ahead. Ty, you said you didn't feel overly live, but I mean, you touched 98 miles an hour in the fifth inning. You had to be feeling pretty good. Um, when when they were kind of trying to jump on some fastballs early, how much did it help to kind of elevate in the zone a little bit and, and, and use the fastball that way? Yeah, I mean, it, it definitely helps and um, didn't work in a whole lot. And uh, second, third time through the order, I definitely started, uh, or second time through, started a couple pitches in and up. And I feel like that kind of got them off the, the outside heater and um, I landed a couple sliders that I think their approach was literally don't swing at slider. And um, after my, I wasn't able to land it last week. And so um, just kind of worked on that this week. And once I was able to land it, it kind of, you could see them how to change their approach mid game and um, just opened everything up. How has your feel progressed with the slider? I mean, it kind of looks like a different shaped pitch. It seems like you've got a lot more confidence in terms of really letting that thing Loose and did you even throw any changeups at all tonight? Yeah, I um, the sliders like that's it's my bread and butter, and um, I can kind of play with it a little bit on if I want more side to side and more up and down. Just kind of um, honestly, I have smaller hands, and so the way my hand fits in the seam, I can kind of play with it and let the the curve of the horseshoe do the work. And um, just when I want to land it and throw it for two strikes, it's that's something I've really gotten comfortable at, at, at doing both of them. And I threw two change-ups and um, they were in the end. And uh, I mean, it was a predominantly righty lineup and I just feel like I didn't really need it. And um, and then two I threw, I thought were solid. And it just kind of put that idea back in their head. And I think both those ABs ended in Ks. Kurt, go ahead. Yeah, Ty, uh, in some ways you, you know, seem so focused tonight. I was curious, in some ways, were you pitching angry? Do you feel like you had something to prove, you know, after your first outing? Yeah, I mean, um, I don't know about angry, just just trying to get locked in and staying locked in and um, just felt kind of like I let my team down last week and that's that's not a feeling that I like. And um, I just – it's my job to go out there and give us the best chance to win every week. And so just kind of taking that throughout the week and just staying focused and – and moving from start to start. And pitching with a seven nothing lead after the second inning, did, did that kind of relax you a little bit or pump you up more or how did you uh, react? I mean, I try not to focus on that really too much. Um, yeah. Tulo came up to me after the second or third and he was like, this is a zero zero ball game. Like don't relax, don't step off the gas at all. And um, I kind of took that in into my approach and just like, now it's I'm gonna step on it even more and just really put them away because now once we get a lead, if if I go out there and just take they can have no momentum and just keep it in our hands, it uh, we really feed off that as you can tell in the dugout. Right. And did you feel any way robbed by the infield single? You'd rather be a solid hit if you're gonna give up. No, nah, I mean it's baseball. Um, yeah. I think Cam Cam was upset and I was like, dude, you. I mean, you put your chest on a ball in the first inning, first step out of the game, and if you don't do that, then I'm not even in that situation. So, like, it's – I mean, I wouldn't be where I am without him, and he, he puts it all on the line for us every week at third base, and he definitely takes some rods, and um, uh, he, he's a ball player, and it's – I mean, it, it is what it is. On to next week. And last thing, was this the best game you pitched as a Longhorn by far? Uh. I don't know. I'd say, obviously, stat-wise, yes. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I guess we can say so. I, I think 
Boise State last year, I had a little – my command was a little tighter. And Arkansas, my slider command was a little tighter. But I think overall this this outing was – everything came together and I didn't really need to veer from my original game plan. Congratulations. Thank you. Joe, yeah, go ahead. When, when you were going in the dugout, I know you mentioned that Tulo told you, hey, it's 0-0 in that second inning before anybody really knows what's going on. So when people started to see that – Zero was still under the hit column, and you go in the inning five and inning six. What was going on in the dugout? Was it just, you know, the normal game planning, or were people avoiding you? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody avoids me anyways on start day, and um, I kind of have my own section in the dugout, and that's that's my thing. I sit at the very end. I watch BP at the very end of the dugout, and I kind of have my space. And so I think no matter what the outing, people know really to that's kind of me, and and I don't – to not talk to me. <laughs> and then you you mentioned, I think, last year that Silas and, and you, you know, developed a relationship. You wanted to be like Garrett Cole and Maldonado, I think you said. Is he kind of the only guy who can go in that bubble? And what's he telling you throughout the, the course of the game? Uh, I mean, Coach Allen comes and talks to me. But, uh, so, I mean, really, honestly, during the game, it's, it's more me talking to Coach Allen and then Allen relaying it to him because he's got to worry about his ABs and, I think it's more of just before the game. We already know what we want to do and just kind of he knows what I want to do in certain accounts and the way hitters are swinging and stuff like that. And, um, I mean, I have to say this year there's been very few times where I've had to shake more than twice, and I think that's props to him. And, I mean, I've had planned shakes, but as far as just normal pitches, he if it's not the first one, then he knows what I want to go to second. I think that's props on him because – that sometimes can take pictures out of a routine and, and, and flow is just um, having to sit there and shake. And I feel like we really got locked in on that page and, and coach Allen's done a great job with that as well. And last one to Dustin. Ty, how much did your just preparation this summer help? I mean, you guys had a shortened year last year. You didn't have any summer league. I mean, you didn't have any Cape Cod or anything like that. Uh, even the preseason and, and the off season are kind of unusual with protocols and everything like that. So how much of that extra work you're able to get in the summer help you right now, like, like stay fresh as a lot of pitchers around the country are still really trying to build up. Yeah. I mean, I kind of just went into it with a game plan and um, I mean, I, I thought quarantine is, as a lot of people took step backwards. I, I told some people that it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me. I mean, I got six months to just truly work on my craft and, and get stronger and, and develop. And, um, I mean, I, my guys back home, I, I threw 25 simulated innings and, um, just the, the at bats I faced there were, were pretty good hitters and just kind of developed more. And yeah, I think just getting stronger and, and it's really, I think I threw, I think 80 innings last year or 70, 75, 80 innings throughout spring, summer, and fall. So I feel like I'm right in stride. And um, like you can kind of see that my, my velocities haven't dropped too much. And, and I feel like I'm in really good shape right now. And also just making mechanical changes with Coach Allen, sticking back into my legs and, and, uh, and just being more efficient. It's allowed that to be easier. Thanks, Ty. I appreciate it. You, Clay Kubiak, coached Zubia in uh, high school, and actually Zubia was the starting quarterback. And so Zubia just showed me his phone, and Clay was calling him like, this must be a misprint. Can't, there's no way possible that Zach Zubia hit him inside the parker. So there's your opening statement. All right, Coach, we'll uh, get somebody unmuted here in just a sec. Kurt, go ahead. Yeah, we were surprised too, David, to see him around. He looked like he was slowing up around third a little bit too. And once the ball kind of shot up the line, or you know, made the middle guys run for it, I'm like, he's either going to score, he's going to get thrown out by ten feet, or he's going <laughs> to fall flat on his face. One of the three is going to happen, and it was worth watching to see which one happens. <laughs> uh. Tell me uh, how big this series is after the start that you guys didn't want. Is 
you know, winning three games like you have, uh, what is that doing for your confidence as a team? Well, I mean, you know, you look at game one and it's a one, one game late in the game and we have to hit uh, a two, a single and score two runs with Mikey set. And then, you know, yesterday we played a different type of game just because that's what the game kind of called for. And that's what we needed down early. And I didn't want guys going to home plate panicking. And so we really utilized the short game much more so than normal. Um, but Dustin would appreciate that we didn't tonight since he doesn't really like our bunt game, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, but honestly, I think it, it, it's, it contributes. Uh, it contributes to seeing the ball better. It contributes to confidence. It contributes to understanding that we can utilize that when we need to. Um, I much prefer seeing our guys do what they did tonight. And they faced a very good left-hander tonight. I mean, he's a Friday night starter. And I really credit Tulo and uh, Coach Miller the way they, they really had a great plan and staying in the middle of the field not trying to do too much. It's kind of what you want all the time, but guys get big at times. And I thought they did a great job and the kids did a good job of carrying it out. And the last piece is, you know, if you're the team pitching and you walk 11 guys, you feel like you got to clean that up. If you're the offense and you get 11 base on balls, then you really feel like we're seeing the ball well. And I thought we did a really good job of some two strikes where, We've been chasing. You could look at the way we were taking some pitches is that we were seeing the ball well. So that kind of goes back to their timing and being on time. Um, so that was very impressive. And then you just look at the pitching tonight. I mean, what do you say? Ty Mavin was outstanding. And uh, on the uh, the hits, you had seven hits, uh, eight strikeouts. And uh, the six of those hits came the first two innings. Did the walks kind of – does that take away a team's aggressiveness a little bit at the plate when they're kind of don't have that command on the mound? I mean, it's a funny game. You know, you can score seven runs in the first two innings and then, you know, still have some good at bats and I come up with runs and then not score the ball. And, you know, I think it was yesterday we just tacked on runs all day. Uh, so it's just an interesting game and you can't really predict that. I didn't think we gave up at bats. Uh, I, I really felt like we gave up a couple of bats uh, gave up a few at bats yesterday more so than today. Thanks coach. Danny, go ahead. David, do you think uh, Zach would have forgiven you if you had held him at third base? Well, you can ask him. He's sitting right here, but <laughs> I just, I mean, we can, we, we can all go to our grave knowing that Zach Zubia can score on an inside the park. I, that's how I look at it. I mean, it was worth watching no matter what. Um, Ivan has been swinging a pretty hot stick um, throughout the season, you know, whether it's, you know, the home run in Arlington tonight, those, um, the, those singles, you know, what has he brought to this uh, lineup for you guys early on? Yeah. I mean, Ivan is uh, a kid that really sees the ball well with some strength that has the ability to hit from gap to gap. And he proved that tonight. Uh, it was really impressive too, because he picked up Zach on a, with two RBIs on a single with two outs. And, you know, those types of games or that type of an at bat can change a game. And, you know, he, he's an interesting guy because he's strong, but he's really got a pretty compact swing. And so if he stays in the zone and, and just, uh, stays in the middle of the field, he's still going to hit with power, and he can hit with power to all fields. So, yeah, he's – and he's a threat. He's a threat in the box in a, with a presence that makes you think, okay, I've got Hammer coming up, Zub, Melendez, you know, when Saige get, gets going. I mean, that's a pretty good middle-of-the-order lineup. Dustin, go ahead. David, I think in terms of stuff, this, this starter tonight was probably the most similar guy you guys have seen since Arlington compared to some of those guys that you saw up there. How encouraged were you that, you know, from the jump, these guys were aggressive, they're putting the ball in play hard, but like you said too, um, you know, they're laying off, they're spitting on some sliders and kind of not expanding the zone as well, which was an issue earlier in the season. Yeah, I think when you start looking at 
at bats, and then you start looking at, you know, do you want to go mechanics? Do you want to go swing at the right pitches? But we kind of go to a simple kind of game plan of are we on time first? And if we can be on time, then we can really feel like our mechanics aren't going to break down and we're going to see the ball. We see the ball, we're going to swing at better pitches. And I think when you get into the sixth game of the year and just getting the flow of three, four at bats a, a, a night, you know, you start getting more and more comfortable. I mean, let's face it, it was a tough outing in Arlington. And coming out of the gates, we faced some really, really mm -hmm. Omaha type stuff. And so I, I just don't think we were ready for it, to be honest with you. Not that kind of stuff. Um, but we learn from it, and that's the key. We want to keep learning and get better. Ty, I mean, he's touching 98 miles an hour in the fifth, and I don't know if he even broke a sweat. I know it's a cold night, but still, I mean, the guy looks like he's in great shape. Just how much has his preparation really impressed you and also prepared him for just to handle this unusual season? So many guys across the country are still really trying to build up right now, and he seems like he's as ready as any other season. In the eighth inning, I went to he and Coach Allen and I said, all right, he's done. And Coach is like, well, he wants to get his pitch count up. And I'm like, well, I want him to be fresh next Friday night. But both of them merit, you know, where Ty is. Ty's sitting there knowing what he needs to do to be good the next week. Um, and he probably would have went back out in the eighth had that inning not lasted as long as it did. Um, but it was the smartest thing to do at the time. But he's the best preparer I've ever seen, ever, in 34 years. I mean, from how he works in the offseason to his rollouts, to his stretch, to his yoga, to his strength conditioning. I mean, he's very precise on his throwing plan. Um, everything that he does has a purpose. And that's a, that's a coach's dream. I mean – I just feel like no matter what happens on Friday night, I know that that kid's going to be ready to give us a chance to win. Joe, go ahead. David, he's, uh, Ty said he only ended up throwing uh, two change-ups this, this past night so, or this past outing. So as he's able to, I know it'll probably require more change-ups, but what do you take away from the fact that he basically could just go fastball slider and do what he did tonight? I mean, I've seen it before with guys that we've had. And, uh, you know, when you can command your fastball, that's different than needing a third pitch. And I think at times he feels like he needs a third pitch when he doesn't command it. And that's what happened to him in, in Arlington. Um, he still didn't throw the change up much, but it's the first thing I look at is, did you command your fastball? All right. Were you able to hit with your slider on zero, zero or did you throw it in a good spot for chase? Um, you can pitch on this level if you have two plus pitches. I, you know, the home run he gave up in Arlington was his third pitch, his changeup. He threw it one time in the game. So for me, I would love to see him create that pitch, but he's got to really get a better feel for it to trust that pitch. He will, but at the same time, I don't want him to take away from his, uh, his slider and his fastball. I mean, you got a guy, like you said, pumping 98 in the fifth with down angle and looks like he's in great shape to do it. I mean, who am I to say that he needs to change that, right? I'm just the coach. And finally, Jeff. David, kind of piggybacking a little bit on what Dustin was asking a minute ago, just kind of some, some early season stuff, you know, you, mentioned the weekend you guys had last weekend tonight I think five of the top six teams in the country lose is that part of the deal just early in the season or is it for everybody is it just going to be a little bit wonky to start this season given you know the extended off season and everything being so irregular throughout the fall and any early winter with COVID if we would have played an average team or a good team at home and went three and oh we wouldn't be as good as we are right now. And we still have a lot of room to get better. But for us to challenge ourselves and realize that we're not as good as we think we are, or to realize how much better we can get, is going to help us. Did it sting? Yes. But I don't think we're going to really grow unless we have some 
some setbacks. Uh, you know, if it came easy for us, that would be unfortunate. But we were prepared to face this left-hander because of last week. And, and I think that's a step in the right direction for us. And Coach, actually, we got one more with Kurt. You only had one. You only had one day before this series, so you talked about the approach and everything. Were you almost talking more mental than physical as far as approaching this series after last weekend? That's the first place we always go. You yeah. know, making sure that we're we're not cluttered. We're not trying to do too much. We're not having a wholesale change because if that's the case, we didn't do our preparation going into it. Now, there's things that we did physically, not necessarily mechanically, but just uh, utilizing some things that are visual, getting back to the middle of the field, slowing the game down. All the things that we want to do were, were very evident today. But we have a new game tomorrow. So we've got to be ready to build off of it and understand it's 0-0 zero, zero in the first. Good. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right, guys. Appreciate it. Hey, Zach, can you hear us? Yeah. All right. One second. And Danny, go ahead. One more. All right, Wheels, uh, take us through the inside the Parker. Well, I saw the guy miss the ball in center field, and I took off. I knew I, had, I, knew I could get to third. And then coach started wailing his arms around like crazy. And I was like, all right, we're going to do this. And, and I scored and I was, I was kind of in disbelief when he started waving his arms around. I'm not going to lie to you, but, um, you know, it was, it was a cool moment to be a part of, um, been here for five years and that's my first one and probably last one, but I don't think I even ever hit one in T-ball because the coach just said T-ball, but, um, no, yeah, it was, it was, it was a really cool moment for me, for sure. Um, can you tell us what happened with you on um, on Wednesday and kind of your week coming back from that? Um, yeah, I would just say that we had some, you know, we have some COVID rules that we kind of mess with around here and um, had to pass COVID rules and make sure that we had all that squared away before I could return to, to the return of the team. Um, yeah. Justin, go ahead. Zach, what's it been like for you guys offensively? It seems like, you know, these, these last couple of games, you guys are starting to find your stride and it almost seems like it's kind of contagious. It seems like, you know, Cam has been really aggressive from the jump and it seems like every game, a couple more guys kind of join in. And, and tonight I think you guys was, was your guys' best offensive performance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when we got back from Arlington, we kind of did a, a deep dive and, uh, what we thought we could do better as a team. And uh, it's obviously been paying off. We just, you know, I think we just got back to simplifying it a little bit, simplifying our approach, not trying to do too much. I think we were trying to, to trying to drive the three run homer every single swing in Arlington and then came back here and, you know, just take your medicine, just keep on taking base hits, base hits. And obviously you're going to square balls up better and probably have more results with that. Um, you know, and it's just the team philosophy and everyone's got to buy into it. And it obviously it's been showing. I just hope that we can uh, continue to show that we're a strong, resilient team. You know, we could have crumbled after three, uh, after 0-3 and, and a pretty poor offensive showing. But I, I like how this team's came back and got popped and we're coming back and, you know, coming back stronger too. It's been awesome to see. What was the dugout reaction when you finally made it to the dugout after that inside the park home run? Did somebody have an oxygen tank waiting or anything like that? I mean, I think they were kind of shocked too. I mean, <laughs> um, you know, I think I'm the last person on this team that you would expect that from. And, uh, you know, it was, it was cool. And I think it brought our team some energy. So uh, that was fun to see too. Kirk, you're up. Yeah, Zach, all, all the, the 11 walks that you guys got, uh, I don't know, does that take away any of the aggressiveness from you guys at the plate, or does they sh just show your pitch selection was really good tonight? No, I mean, I think we had – I mean, obviously it's a it's a tale of two two worlds. I mean, we had 
I don't even know. I mean, it was a, I think it was like 45 strikeouts in Arlington. Right. And then to yep. be able to have some plate discipline to come back um, really shows that there's, there's a learning curve that we're, that we're starting to hit um, because, you know, it's easy. I mean, I've, I would probably guess that 11 of those walks, probably four or five of them are in a three, two count. And I mean, it's easy just to crumble um, in a three, two count, and not win that at bat, but, you know, not taking at bats for granted and winning those three, two counts, winning, just any two strike count is big for us. And, you know, um, it's good to see that, that mentality, that philosophy go to work. And uh, I think that's really good for our hand or good for our uh, team. And did, did coach Pierce, coach Allen, Tulo, anybody uh, after last weekend, you know, have any good advice that just is in your head when you're at the plate, you and your other batters? No, I mean, I, I think that it's a collective effort amongst all of us that, um, our coaches kind of just have, I mean, they do a really good job of paving the way for us about what we need to do in the box. And, um, you know, it shows that our team's coachable and it shows that our, we have the right guys in the right places, just gathering information, taking that information and applying it. I think that the last three or four days, we've had the best BP rounds I've seen on this team and, um, it's starting to translate into the games. And it's just really, really nice to see our team grow. And that pitcher is pretty good tonight. That starting left-hander, wasn't he? Oh yeah, he, I mean his stuff was electric. I mean, I think he was what ninety-two, ninety-four out of the gate, and um, I mean he he was trying. I mean he was aggressive. Um, short arm, quick arm, get on you a little bit, turn that ninety-four into ninety-six, and um, it was just really good to see our team take nice, easy takes, nice, easy swings, not trying to do too much, not trying to match power with power. Thanks, Zach. And finally, Danny. Zach, with this offense you know, scoring 11 and Ty pitching the way he pitched tonight, is this kind of the Texas team you want to see this season? No, oh, yeah. I mean, who doesn't want to see 11-1 wins? Um, but I think it's not about the 11-1. It's the way we did it. You know, we did it with, uh, with enthusiasm. We did it with aggressiveness. We did it with uh, – you know, just a kind of pedal to the metal approach the whole game. You know, we, uh, we, we, I, I would say that we won almost every single pitch this game. And that was something that we preach is just win every single pitch. And that's something that was really good to see um, for our team.